and then it's game over and you haven't even started yet. Then you can sit next to that, you know, Georgia grad, that Georgia State grad, and wait for your name to get called for that interview knowing that it don't even matter. I don't know why you're out here. Sure hate it for you. It doesn't matter because you have the mindset that says, I act like a CEO. I know how to make a good first impression. I know how to sell my best attributes. I understand the psychology behind little things, right? I have some magnetism that I know how to put to work. It's done, right? So that's how you can find your inner CEO. Last, get into the dotted line. Again, I say, at some point in your career, you're going to have to get to a point where you're going to have to close business, close a contract, negotiate something. This is not a portion where, you know, I'm going to give you something new under the sun. I'm going to share with you five different types of closes and how to use them. You can play with them on people at home, and that's how I did. I got real good at doing it with friends of mine. I was like, yeah, I close them, you know, until I can go out into the business world and do the same thing. So the first type of close I'm going to share with you is called an assumptive close. This is where you ask a question, and their answer implies a yes, right? So help me understand how the purchase of this product will help in you all's organization. Oh, well, we use it here. Yeah, you use it. Done. Got it. You know, that's an assumptive close. The reverse close. This is where, let's say you ask a question, is there any reason if we gave you the product at this price that you wouldn't use it? No. Reverse close time-sensitive close. Now, I'm going to show you how you can use some of these in an interview or, nego or uh, networking arena. But a time-sensitive close, that's just when you're putting a time step on it. You said you wanted to have this position filled by next Tuesday, so what would be our next steps before then? Time-sensitive, time right? The direct question close. It looks like we answered all of your questions. Shall we move forward with this? That's saying we took care of all of your concerns. You know, this interview has been that process. That's the reason why we're here talking since we've answered all of your questions. Shall we go ahead and move forward with the paperwork? Shall I go ahead and expect a, a second call? Shall I expect for someone to be reaching out to me? Direct question. I learned in business easy off, early on. If you don't ask for the check, you won't get it. You won't get it. That's what they're waiting on. They're waiting for you to ask, not in an overly zealous way, but they're waiting on you to ask. Right? You got to close it. And then there's the direct statement close. Let's go ahead and move forward with this. Let's go ahead and set a time when we're going to uh, take our next meeting. Let's go ahead and put another date on the calendar. You're giving them a direct close, a direct statement. You're telling them what to do. So all of these things, let's say, again, at this job fair you're going to or you're in an interview, and it comes down, you know, you've asked your trill of questions, and it comes down to that last one. That last one needs to be a close. You need to, you need to walk out of there knowing something. Because here's the thing, and I want you all to take note of this, that this all works when you feel as if you've not lost face. No one likes to be rejected. No one likes to be told no, right? To this day, I'm a grown man. I don't like to be told no, you know? My wife, she kids, she's like, if we got, um, if, no, she said, uh, if something happened to me, you wouldn't remarry? No. I'm not going through holes. Somebody telling me no, and I got the, mm-mm, no. I'm with you. You said yes, I'm good. You know, <laughs> we just going to ride this thing till the wheels fall off. Uh-uh, no. So I don't like to be rejected. But here's the thing. I had to look at rejection a different way because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So I decided to look at rejection like this. They didn't tell me no. I just eliminated an option. Because that's what you're doing. You're putting out resumes, you're making calls, you're making connections, all of these options. You just want one to stick. So in wanting that one to stick, some of them have to fall. So they're just helping you identify <laughs> which one is falling. So that way I can walk out of the thing. No, we're not going to talk to you anymore. No problem. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Just eliminated an option. Good. You know, you don't have to worry about it anymore. It's all in mindset. It's all wrapped around mindset. Same thing. I used to um, I had a coaching client. She came to me. She was very dejected. She didn't have any self-esteem. She said when she was around other professional women, she felt like she felt very inferior, like they had more education, they were more professional. She just put them on a higher pedestal, not knowing if they were and weren't. 
So I gave her a shock therapy treatment right off the bat. I told her to do three things because all of this is about feeling that you belong. You have to feel that you belong in certain circles. So in order to do that, I told her, this is what I want you to do. First thing, what's your dream car? She said, Jaguar. I said, you need to go test drive a brand new Jaguar. Get dressed up, do a little research, go to the dealer, and test drive. What are they going to tell you? No. They're trying to close. They only know what you tell them. Don't walk up saying, I'm broke, I can't afford it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they're going to kick you off the lot. But I'm telling you, I did it. In my 20s, I had it in my mind that I was going to be the owner of a brand new Range Rover, a $92,000 vehicle. So glad I woke up, right? <laughs> but the thing is about having options. But nonetheless, I did that. I knew that Range Rover backwards and forwards. I went to the Range Rover lot in Houston, Texas. Man I said, may I help you? Yes, I want to test drive the Range Rover. I'll get the keys for you. I'll go, right, you get the keys. <laughs> and I'm riding a $92,000 car. Now, the feeling that goes through me is I belong. Like, I'm, this is happening. I'm in this. So I told her, I want you to go drive, test drive a Jaguar. Number two. I said, you need to go walk through half a million, million dollar homes, just for the sake of it. Just go walk through it. Touch stuff. That's my refrigerator. That's my bed. I would come home and I would do this, you know? <laughs> Whatever it is, you need to go walk through it. You need to feel like you belong. The last thing I told her, I said, you need to go to the Galleria. You need to go into a store that you would normally avoid simply because of price, and you need to try on items of clothing on purpose. You need to adapt the new phrase instead of saying, that's too much. People that belong say, that's not bad. That tie is $2,000. That's not bad. <laughs> now, when you get outside, have your heart attack. <laughs> Don't do it in there. Right? You try on a pair of shoes. Now, would you like me to wrap these up? No, they don't quite feel like I want them to feel. <laughs> but this was shock therapy because she needed to feel like she belonged. You need to feel like you can sit at a table with a CEO and hold the same conversation that he just got finished having from his coworker in the office. You need to feel that way. If you don't, none of this works. And without a degree, with no experience, making $8.80 an hour, man, I had to make it work. So I'm telling you, you can too, right? So you get them to the dotted line. Now, in closing, I want to tell you, you know, I'll wrap all of this up in, in this blanket. And that is, every day, that you step outside of your door, someone's watching you. Someone's watching you. You're on stage. There is a performance going on. They are looking at your wardrobe. They are watching how you dialogue. They are listening to every word. They are paying attention, even though you think they're not. They are. So my philosophy is, if it's a performance going on, you're about to get a show, right? And that show is culminated with an applause. Now, that applause is anchored in what I call moving the crowd. And I'll close with this. I watch, uh, I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm a singer by nature. I watch a lot of singing shows. I don't like American Idol. I like The Voice, right? Because they don't discriminate on how you look, right? I actually tried out for The Voice. I'm here, so that tells y'all what happened, <laughs> <laughs> right? But this girl got me, though. She, I, 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 I was like, hey, if I'm going to get got, go ahead, do it. You know, she, I held mine, though. Don't slip. But um, so anyway, you know, I watch these shows and there's a point in a performance where as a spectator, you get moved. You get you're on the edge of your seat. You're you're in tune with every note, every word. You just move to to want it, even the stuff you don't like. There was this one uh, was one guy on The Voice. He performed this song that I know I wouldn't listen to. Now I got it on my workout playlist. I'm like, yeah, you know how you like me now, you know, so because I was moved by his performance. Then you have others who I say, you know, even in the music industry, they're technicians. They know how to hit the note. They know how to, you know, decrescendo. They know how to crescendo. They know how to manipulate their falsetto. They're, they're just technicians. They don't give you a show. So in business, it's the same thing. You have to command an applause. In order to get that applause, you have to move your audience. There's a movie that emulates this to a T. People seen the movie Gladiator? There's a scene in Gladiator where, uh, and if you haven't seen it, I'm pretty sure you have it. If you haven't, um, Russell Crowe's character, Maximus, he was a general in the army. You know, he got swindled. You know, he was sold into slavery. And his, the person that owned him, his name was Proximo. Now, now, Proximo has a band of slaves that he just goes around fighting these battles for carnage. 
You know, the, the whole thing is about losing and seeing how they lose. It's real brutal. Right, so Maximus, though, because he's a trained general and it's in him to, you know, take care of his, when he goes out there and he sees people coming, he's just, whap, 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 who wants some? I mean, what? Not killing me. You know, so him and Proximo have this dialogue, and Proximo says, you know, he sends for him, and Proximo says, you're good, Spaniard, but you're not that good. You could be great. So then Maximus says, I'm required to kill, so I kill. That's enough. And Proximo says, that's enough for the provinces, but not for Rome. He goes on to say, he says, listen to me. Learn from me. I wasn't the best because I killed quickly. I was the best because the crowd loved me. Win the crowd and you'll win your freedom. Then it clicked with Maximus. He said, I will win the crowd. I'll give them something they've never seen before. So I close by saying this. There's a crowd out there waiting to see you perform. I just gave you some tools, some resources. You've been getting it all day from other professionals like you. Now it's on you. We weren't the best because we did what we did and just clocked in and clocked out of our job or we showed up and we gave subpar performance. We were the best because we moved the crowd. You're the best because you have what it takes to move the crowd. Win the crowd and you'll win your freedom. So go give them something they've never seen. Go show them you got corporate swagger. My name is Rodney Jones. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on now. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And then uh, The Best Salesman in the World. This is a book. Yeah, this is a book that's not just a